Okay, we're here for day 42. Grab your worksheet. We're going to start out with capitalization. No new rules today. All review. Arrangement in gray and black number one, a painting by James Whistler, is popularly called Whistler's Mother. All right, well, the first thing that we're going to be aware of is that um, arrangement in gray and black number one is the title of a painting. And so we're going to capitalize it just as we would any other title. So the A in arrangement, the G in gray, the B in black, and the N in number should all be capitalized. James Whistler is the painter. His name should be capitalized J and W and is popularly called Whistler's Mother. Again, this would be similar to the title of a, a book or an article. So you're going to capitalize the W in Whistler's and the M in Mother. So that it looks like this. Arrangement in gray and black number one, a painting by James Whistler, is popularly called Whistler's Mother. Moving right along to punctuation, use a comma to separate an adverb or adjective phrase that could usually be placed before the noun or pronoun. For example, the toddler excited and talkative entertained everyone. So that um, little adjective phrase there is marked out with commas. So we have for our sample sentence, the men's baseball team, well-toned and excited, ran onto the field. First, I have to say, I think this is a poor sentence. <laughs> Well-toned and excited really don't relate to each other. And actually, I find it kind of weird that they're commenting that the baseball team was well-toned. But let's just let that go and um, punctuate the sentence. The men's baseball team, well-toned and excited, ran onto the field. Well, we just learned that you're going to use commas to separate an adverb or adjective phrase in a sentence. And the phrase that we have here, well-toned and excited, should be set off by commas. So you can do that first. Then let's take a look at the rest of the sentence. The men's baseball team. Whose baseball team? The men's baseball team. So it's going to be apostrophe S because that shows ownership or possession. So we have the men's baseball team, comma, well-toned. Okay, well-toned is one of those words where it's two separate words, but they're kind of linked. So you're going to put that hyphen between them because they go together. So the hyphen between well and toned and excited, comma, ran onto the field, period. Don't forget your lowly period. So here's what we have. The men's baseball team, comma, well-toned and excited, comma, Ran onto the field, period. Good. Moving on, parts of speech, adjectives and adverbs. Real is an adjective, it means genuine. For example, a real diamond. Really is an adverb that tells to what extent. For example, really sick. How sick were they? They were really sick. This concept is often misused. Be sure to use really when it's being used as an adverb in the sentence and it means to what extent. So if you were to say he walks real fast, that would be wrong. It would be correct to say he walks really fast. Why? Well, let's take a quick peek. Here's how you would diagram it. Here's the subject. Here's the verb. All right. A noun, a verb. He walks Fast. fast is an adverb. How fast? Really fast. Really is being used as an adverb here. Adverbs modify verbs, adjectives, and other adverbs. So you have to say he walks really fast. Over here I have an example of real. Moonstone is a real diamond. Moonstone is the noun or the subject in the sentence. The verb is is. Diamond is a predicate noun in this sentence, and so real would be needed because real is an adjective. The moonstone is a real diamond. So there's in real life how you use real and really. So let's take a look at your sample sentence. The coin is real really, but I think it's real really rusted. The coin is real. It's genuine. So we know that it's real. But I think it's how rusted, to what extent, really rusted. So it should read the coin is real, 
but I think it's really rusted. All right, next section that we have, write the past, past participle form of these verbs. If that feels a little bit um, dusty to you, look back. Day 28 and day 31. We've had it in the past. It's coming back. Can't get rid of it. If you thought maybe you could just get by before, you can't because it's coming back to haunt you. Um, past participles. How do you find a past participle? A past participle is formed by taking the past tense of a verb. Okay? So these are all irregular verbs in this example, and it tells us on page 28 that an irregular verb does not add ed to the past tense or the past participle form. So none of the verbs on page 42 are going to end in ed. All right. Um, the other thing that it tells us is when you are looking at creating a past participle, mentally insert the word had and then connect your verb to it. And if it makes sense, then you've got a past participle. But it doesn't mean you would actually be using the word had. That's why you'll see in the, uh, like in your writing, you wouldn't use the word had. But um, in the example, they have had in parentheses in every single one. That's because you're just thinking it. You're not actually going to write it down as your answer. The past participles, if you were to just list them in answer form, would not have had in front of them. It's just a mental help. I have probably mentally confused you by telling you that, but such that it is. All right, so to find the past uh, participle, you need to find the past tense of these verbs. Okay, so what's the past tense of be? To be would be been. So can I say had been and it makes sense? Yes. So been is the past participle for a, B-E-E-N, been. To go, what is the past tense of go? The past tense of go is gone. Can I say had gone and it makes sense? Yes, gone is your past participle. What is the past tense of to run? It would be run. Can I say had run? Uh, yes, I can, it makes sense. So your past participle is run. What is the past tense of to ride? Road. Can I say, ha I'm sorry, did I? I just did that wrong. <laughs> the past tense of ride is ridden. Uh, can I say had ridden and it makes sense? Yes. So ridden is the past participle. If I had said had rode, that would include me in right there that I was wrong because that doesn't sound right. doesn't make sense. Had ridden does. All right. Sink. The past tense of sink is sunk. Can I say had sunk? Yes, I can. It sounds right. It makes sense. Sunk is the past participle. To come in the past tense would be came. Um, ha I'm having a hard time. <laughs> and I'm not going to redo the video, so deal with it. The past tense of come is come. And I would say had come. And that would be correct. So come is the past participle. The next one is to bring. The past tense of bring is brought. So uh, can I say had brought? I can, makes sense. Brought is your past participle. To break, past tense would be broken. Had broken makes sense. Broken is the past participle. To burst, past tense is burst. Can I say had burst? I can, it makes sense. Burst is the past participle. To sing, past tense, is sung. Can I say had sung? I can. Sung is the past participle. To lose, past tense, is lost. Can I say had lost and have it make sense? I can. Lost is the past participle. Last one, to choose, past tense, would be chosen. Can I say had chosen? I can and it makes sense. So take a look here. There's the list. There's your answers for today. You can see I highlighted day 28 and day 31. Okay, I have a rule. My videos should not go over 10 minutes and I'm getting really close to that. So I'm gonna say good luck on the sentence combining. God bless you and goodbye.